He was one of the 100 greatest players in NHL history. The greatest player in the game says he was the greatest goalie to ever play the game. Five Stanley Cups, four of which in a five-year span. He played with another one of the greatest goalies in NHL history. Probably played in the best tournament and the best hockey ever played. What does he think of the best goalie or best two goalies in the game right now? What does he think of the game itself? And he's gone from former player to now coach. He'll talk to us about three ice. I'm Marinero. It's the sick podcast. The great Grant Fuhr is coming up. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the sick podcast with Tony Marinero. The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. And now a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadiens win the Stanley Cup. Sports entertainment like no other. Brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. Marinero, it's the sick podcast brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. The beer for those who follow their instinct and live their passions in order to make their mark. And of course, Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, which was back in 1993. Well, I tell you, you have to go back to Lacage. It's time you get back there. The menu will surprise you. And we're going to be back for the sickest draft party ever to make its way to Montreal on Thursday, July 7. Stay tuned for that. I'm going to tell you that Lacage is going to be a very, very big part of it. I've been doing this for 20 years uh, in terms of sports radio and in terms of interviewing and over the past couple of years right here with the sick podcast and some podcasts with all due respect to all of our guests are a little bit more special than others. Today is one of those. It's not often you have the chance to talk to a hockey hall of famer, five Stanley cups, four of which came in a five year span. He was one of my favorite goalies of all time. Grant Fuhr, welcome to the Sick Podcast. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. It's very nice to see you. It's very nice to meet you. Uh, I was born in 1972, so when you were doing your thing at the best of your ability, I would say somewhere in the early 80s to late 80s, um, I was a huge hockey fan, and although I was born and raised in Montreal and I cheered for the Montreal Canadiens, I could recognize greatness, and everyone could, and uh, Grant Fuhr was great. Well, some days. I'm not sure it lasted every day, but we tried to have some fun while we were playing. Hey, almost 20-year career in the National Hockey League with Edmonton, Toronto, Buffalo, Los Angeles, St. Louis, and Calgary. A Hockey Hall of Famer inducted in 2003. Five Cups, four of which were over a five-year span. And, you know, one of the things when I look back at your career, I had forgot until I did a little bit of homework that Grant Fuhr had played for the Calgary Flames. So you saw the rivalry on both ends of the spectrum, albeit very limited with Calgary in one year where I believe you played less than 25 games. But was it tough for you to become a Calgary Flame after you had played most of your career as an Edmonton Oiler? Uh, you know what? It really wasn't that bad. I think the biggest thing is the Battle of Alberta had kind of died down a little bit by then. And there had been other guys that had played on both teams. So... Both teams were in a rebuilding stage, so there wasn't a whole lot of a battle left. I want to talk to you about Three Ice and your coaching career now, which is going to get underway. <laughs> but before I do, right before I do, we had a chance to see the Battle of Alberta uh, probably about a month ago, of course, in the National Hockey League playoffs. It was Edmonton and Calgary with the Oilers winning and Connor McDavid putting on a real show. What did you think of that series, Grant? Uh, you know what? I was impressed with the way Edmonton played in that series. I was a little surprised it ended in five games. I thought it was going to be a bit more of a physical series and a little more of a long drawn out series, but I mean, Edmonton played well and deserved to win. I was surprised it was as offensive as it was because I thought that for Daryl Sutter's team to win, they were going to bottle down and they were going to play very, very tight defensive hockey. And instead the Oilers said, we're not playing your game. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl said, we're playing our game. Well, you know what? I think it was a benefit to the Oilers that it turned into a wide open series. I mean, I thought 
Calgary was a bigger, heavier team and would play a more physical game than try and slow the pace down a little bit. And the fact that they wanted to play run and gun with Edmonton, I think played right into Edmonton's hands. We're going to get back to your career, the National Hockey League, in just a second. One of the main reasons why I got you on, and it's a pleasure to talk to you, like I said, was to talk to you about three ice. This is very, very exciting. We've had some coaches on the air with us before, notably John LeClaire, Guy Carboneau, and the list goes on and on. But you're going to be coaching in the three ice. You'll be one of the coaches in what will be three-on-three hockey over the next nine weekends, which will start and end in Las Vegas And I'm fascinated with the entire concept because even though I thought I wouldn't like three-on-three hockey being a traditionalist, every time a game is tied, I'm hoping no one scores the winner so that it goes to overtime so I can see three-on-three because with so much youth and so much skill and and so much speed, I love the open ice. And you're going to be involved in this tournament where you're going to be coaching. How excited are you? I'm actually excited to get back into the game. I mean, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I also think it's the best part of hockey. I mean, I'm that strange goalie that likes offense. So to see three-on-three and see the guys in wide open ice where they get a chance to showcase their skill and their talents, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I know you're going to have a lot of fun with this, but an athlete is a competitor, and a competitor is a competitor. How much homework have you done just to take a look at certain things you can probably implement in the three-on-three, certain advantages your team might have, or – Are you just going to go out there, leave it to the players and say, guys, just do your thing? I'm curious to hear that. No, we've got some theories on how three on threes played. I mean, I happen to play with one of the greatest offensive teams ever. So we did some things a little bit differently, maybe more so in our own end, but we're not going to stifle the creativity either. I want the guys to be creative. I want them to create offense. And if we can score seven or eight goals a game, I would, I like that too. I guess one of the things that makes the most sense from the outside would be, a team that's going to emphasize puck possession, right? I mean, you're not dumping and chasing in three-on-three hockey, right? You want to hold on to the puck and maybe try and have the other team give you an opening or maybe make a mistake and stuff like that and capitalize, right? But is puck possession like number one of the things that you want to accomplish? It is. I mean, you definitely want to have control of the puck. And when you're in the offensive end, you don't want to miss the net with shots. I mean, as soon as you miss the net, you create odd man rushes. And for our team defensively when they miss the net we want to be able to attack right away where we can create the odd man rushes so it's going to be a little bit of a cat and mouse game but at the same time it's going to be a very high paced cat and mouse game you're going to be going to many cities like i said and and here in canada closest to home where i am in montreal you're going to be playing in quebec city which is going to be kind of cool so we look forward to that and one of the things that i really really liked about the whole concept besides the three on three and the open ice and we're going to see the speed and we're going to see the skill is that they've implemented prize money, kind of like what the PGA has on their tour. And so the guys, you know, they kind of have no other choice but to put on a show. There's a lot of incentive and motivation there to do well because the better you do, the more money you're going to end up making in terms of prize money, right? Well, you know what? It's just like old-time hockey. We all had small contracts, but we got paid bonuses to win. So. I think it's kind of a throwback to the old days, which I kind of like. If you don't perform, you don't get paid. So it's incentive for the guys. And I've got a couple of guys that have played in the NHL on my team that they know how to win. So it's still about winning, and it's fun to get the competitive juices going again. Yeah, Who are they? I got Ryan Malone. Yeah. Played for Tampa for a little while. Mike Lundin played in Tampa for a little while. Yeah. Jeff Dave played in Pittsburgh for a bit. He played in Arizona for a little while. So we've got a little bit of a veteran presence in our team. Hey, you know what? I think if you have former Tampa players and former Pittsburgh players, you're going to do pretty good because (laughs) the Penguins have won three cups uh, uh, since they had won in uh, 91 and 92. They've won three cups since. And of course, Tampa Bay is gunning for three in a row here. And they had won a Stanley Cup. I believe it was back in 2004 or five or whatever it was. But anyway, uh, I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, We look forward to that. You know, One of the things I really liked about you, besides the fact that you were spectacular the way you gold, was I love some of your masks that you wore. Why don't we try and bring up a couple of pictures here? Look at that, huh? Look at that mask. We like the old school stuff. And there's, and hold on a second. Here's another one, which is slightly different, I think, right? Yeah, that's my original. I wore that my first couple of years. Well, how many masks, how many different masks did you wear? Because obviously those were with the Edmonton colors and you played for, 
uh, six different teams, I, I believe. But how many different masks do you have? Do you know that? Did you take? Ah, uh, you know what? Off the top of my head, I don't really know. Because I in Edmonton, I wore what did I wear? I wore three different masks. Yeah, but multiple different paint jobs on them. Pretty so cool. We, we could change up the colors a little bit and have some fun with it. Uh, oh, yeah. Toronto, we wore a couple. Buffalo, yeah. we wore two or three. So we probably got 15 or 18 overall. You won your five cups with the Edmonton Oilers. So I think it's safe to say it was the most enjoyable experience you had of all the teams that you played for, right? Um, my question, is that correct, right? I think it's safe to say that, right? I bo born and raised there too, so it doesn't hurt. All right, got it. <laughs> Least enjoyable was where and why? Uh, you know what? I, there was no places I didn't enjoy. I mean, I think that's the fun part is I enjoyed every day of my career. So there were no bad cities that I played in. Pretty cool. Still to this day, and I was born in 72, like I said, I believe the best hockey I've ever seen in my life was the 1987 Canada Cup. Let's bring up a picture of you here wearing that Canada jersey. There you are in the locker room after the game. Three games that finished by a score of six to five two of which were for Canada, one for USSR, uh, USSR, pardon me. Would you agree, like I thought that hockey grant was unbelievable? You know what? It was fun. And you're looking at the best players in the world. And I think that was the fun part of it is, did we try to play a little bit of defense? Yeah, we did. But when you've got that much talent on the ice, you're going to give up some goals. You can give up five goals and still play good. That's the fun part of playing in something like that. And anytime you get a chance to play for your country, it's obviously special. Wayne Gretzky was the best player in the world, and Mario Lemieux wanted to be the next best player in the world. And they got to play together in that competition, and Mike Keenan put them together on the same line. And they were magical. Eh? Wayne Gretzky was the best playmaker in the entire tournament. Mario Lemieux was the best goal scorer in the entire tournament. Can you begin to put into words what it felt like and what it looked like watching those two unbelievable players do their thing together at the same time in that tournament. Uh, you know what? I was kind of spoiled playing at Edmonton. I get to see four or five of the best players in the world every day. Yeah. So you add a guy like Mario to that mix. You add a guy like Dale Howarchuk into that mix. I mean, we had so much talent. Some of the guys that didn't make that team, we could have made a second team that may have been the second best team in that tournament. So it's just wow. such a great group of guys with so much talent that it's fun to see them all come together and all play in different positions and just how skilled they really are. Uh, some would say that I probably shouldn't ask you this question because you're going to be biased, but at the same time, you had a, a privileged view and a front row view, but everyone has an opinion on who the greatest hockey player to ever play the game was. Obviously, you played a very long time with number 99, Wayne Gretzky. Is he the greatest player to ever play the game, in your opinion? I think so. I mean, biased or unbiased, I still think he's the greatest player in the game. So, I mean, Mario, I think if he'd have stayed healthy, would be a 1B. So, he was that good. I mean, you, you got to go the throwbacks. You look at a guy like Jean Beliveau. You look at a guy like Bobby Orr. I mean, their guy, Guy Lafleur, guys that changed the game. There's so many great players that the game's been lucky enough to have. How about today? Connor McDavid, you, you you know, some people have said, I've never seen a player like Connor McDavid. Connor McDavid's the greatest player to ever play hockey. Um, when you hear something like that, with all due respect to him, it's it, it, obviously it's a very good opinion to have, but I just asked you who the greatest player was, and you said it was Wayne Gretzky. If, you, if someone would say it's Connor McDavid, you would think what exactly, or what would you say? I think he's on his way to it. I mean, he's got a ton of skill. I think that's the biggest thing is he does things at a speed that nobody else can do. And that's a special talent. I mean, I've played with a guy like Alex McGillney. He was the same way. He had that extra gear and his hands could keep up and his head could keep up. There's been a lot of guys that were great skaters, but their hands could never keep up. Or if their hands could keep up, their heads didn't keep up. So he's got the full package. It's only a matter of the sky's the limit for what he can do. You just brought up the name of a very good Russian goal scorer in Alexander McGillney from him on to another one. If I would have told you that Wayne Gretzky's record of 894 goals one day would be in danger because Alexander Ovechkin is within striking distance, would you have believed me? Uh, Ten years ago, probably not. But watching Alex over the last few years, he's definitely got a shot. I mean, the biggest thing for him the next few years is trying to stay healthy. I yeah. think that's going to be the only thing that's going to hold him back from getting to the 894 goals. 
Wayne Gretzky says and said to John Davidson, I believe, if memory serves me well, Grant Fuhrer is the greatest goaltender of all time. You hear the man who you just said is the greatest hockey player ever, in your opinion, say that you're the greatest goaltender of all time. It's pretty cool, eh? It is pretty cool. I mean, I'd still kind of give the nod to Terry Sawchuk, but... Is that right, eh? Yeah, I still think he was the, he was the bar. He set the bar before I started... He set the bar that Patrick chased, that Marty chased. So the fact that they've caught Terry, I think that says a lot about Marty and Patrick, but I would still, I still lean towards Terry Sawchuk. I might put you on the spot here, but you're a big boy, so I would imagine you can take it. If I were to ask you, in your opinion, the top five goaltenders of all time, would you feel embarrassed to put yourself in that list, or would you feel cool about putting yourself in that list saying, you know what? I think I'm one or two or three or whatever. Like, how, how would you, or would you rather just, keep yourself out of it? You know what? With all the great goaltenders that have always, that have ever played in the national hockey league, I'm happy if I could put in the top 20. I mean, there's been wow. so many great goalies. So, I mean, the fact that you go to the hundred greatest players, I got a t- chance to take a picture with Billy Smith, yeah. Ken Dryden, yeah. Bernie yeah. Perrant. Dominic Hasek, then you can throw Tony Esposito in there, Glenn Hall. I mean, there's so many great goalies. Just to be in the same conversation is special for me. You won four cups in five years. Ken Dryden won six cups in eight years. That's not too shabby, too, huh? Speaking of great goalies, you formed a duo with Dominic Hasek when you were together with the Buffalo Sabres. He won heart trophies as the league's MVP a couple of years in a row. Some believe that at his most dominant, even for a shorter period of time, maybe he was probably the most dominant goaltender in the history of hockey with a very unorthodox style. Can you begin to put into words the first time you saw Dominic Hasek goal and he had that unorthodox style, what you thought? You know what? I got to see Dom back in the Canada Cup. So I get a chance to see him play for the Czech Republic and you knew he was good. It was just a matter of him getting an opportunity. And yeah. the fact that he did what he did, I mean, for what, two, three, four years in Buffalo, he was all world. Yeah. So at for those three or four years, was he the best in the world? Most definitely. You can't take that away from him. You look at Ken Dryden in his prime. Was he the best in the world at that time? Yes, he was. So everybody kind of goes through little spans where, yeah, you're on the, if you're at the top of your game, you could be the best in the world. Is it harder to goal now than it was before? or not, in your opinion? Uh, you know what? The Stopping a puck hasn't changed. The game's changed a little bit. It's gotten, the guys are bigger, faster. Motor guys shoot the puck better, but at the same time, it's still guys in front of you. It's still being able to read the play. It's still being able to move. So the position of playing goal, it's, it's not that it's harder. It's just different. Yeah. Let's just say we uh, we go conservatively and we'll go with a top 10 list, all right? And you're going you're gonna to put Terry Sawchuk in that list. And of course, the great Grand Fury yourself will be on that list. And let's just say Dominic Hasek and Patrick Waugh and Martin Bradar. And now I move on and I ask you about Andre Vasilevsky, who has won the Stanley Cup the last two years. And his team is in the Stanley Cup final as he tries to go for three and three. Your thoughts on him? I think vassy has been phenomenal. I mean, I had fun watching Tampa and the Rangers. You look at the yeah. two best goalies in the league right now. In yeah. Vassy and Chesterkin. So... The fact of when it comes to clinching games, he has an uncanny ability to not give up a goal. I mean, it's the unbelievable, fact, eh? What's I think he's given up two goals in the last three or four years in a clinching game. So just that in itself is such a special ability that I think that's what makes him a great goalie is he has that ability. He's got that mental ability. If he does have a bad game, he just lets it go and he's all world the next game. So he's fun to watch. When goalies are that good and they're in the zone, of course, other players are looking for whatever edge they can get, and they're going to see a lot of goalie interference. And it just seems like the National Hockey League rules are just not as clear as everyone would like them to be. (laughs) When it goes to video replay, people don't even know what's a goal anymore and what's not a goal and stuff like that. Is there a rule that you would like to see changed in that regard? Uh, You know what? I'd like to see them clarify it a little bit. I think it's kind of in a haze where – even I question some of the goalie interference calls. I mean, there's hockey plays and there's goalie interference. And sometimes I think the lines get blurred a little bit. So, I mean, I'm still friends with some of the referees. There's some on TV. I'll text them to find out what they think, just because I know what I think. And we may disagree, but 
it's how the rules are written and how they're interpreted. And as a goalie, you'd like it to be black and white. You don't want gray in it. And right now that everything around the crease has a lot of gray to it. Yeah. Uh, a shout out to matrix home fitness.ca right here on the sick podcast, discover a club quality workout. You can bring it home in the comfort of your own home. Visit matrix home fitness.ca. They got great ellipticals and treadmills and bikes and the list goes on and on. Uh, obviously he's caught everyone's attention over the last year or so, but what an unbelievable playoff thus far for Kale McCarr. And the reason why he, I bring him up is because he's the best offensive defenseman in the national hockey league. I think since your former teammate, Paul Coffey, how much have you enjoyed watching Kale McCarr do his thing? Isn't he something? He is. I think it's kind of been his coming out party. I mean, everybody knew he was good, but I don't think they realized how good he really is. One, he's a f- he's great in his own end, which he gets some credit for that, but probably not as much as he should. But his offensive talents and the way he reads the game offensively is just on another level, and it's very special. Are you a fan of the game? I mean, when some retire, they just they can't get enough, and they watch all the time. And others, when they retire, well, they say, you know what? I was involved in the game for so long. It's time to do other things and stuff like that. Do you watch? Are you a fan? Oh, no, I'm definitely a fan of the game. I mean, yeah. I watch a lot of hockey still. I enjoy the game. I enjoy going to the game still. So, yeah, it's it's a game I grew up loving, and that love has never left. I still have a love for the game. Which player do you enjoy watching the most? I like watching all of them. I mean, I like seeing the different styles, some of the different theories. It just I like seeing the guys compete. I mean, I think that's the best thing in – Playoff hockey, there's still nothing better than that. So once that level starts to go up a little bit, I mean, you look at October through about January, it's a good pace. But you look at the middle of January on, the pace just keeps going up and up and up. Yeah. And come playoff time, everybody's firing in all cylinders. And the game is so exciting at playoffs that you can't help but watch it. This coaching that you're going to be doing in three-on-three hockey with three ice, is this the start of something for Grant Fuhrer or it's just uh, a chance to go back into the game here and there and just have a little bit of fun? Or could it be the start of something for you? Oh, you know what? I like being around the game. So, yeah, it gets my foot back in the door. And could it progress to something else with a little bit of luck? Yeah. I mean, I love being around the rink and I love being around the game. Being a goalie coach, is that something that would interest you at all or not? Oh, no, definitely. I mean, I still enjoy watching the goalies. I still study the goalies to see how they play, the difference between when I played, when they played, the size difference, how some of the smaller goalies still adapt. Like if you look at uh, Frank Coos in Colorado, yeah, he's a smaller goalie, and you see him out on top of his crease a lot more than you see the bigger goalies. So it's kind of a throwback to some of the older guys, and I enjoy seeing the differences. I have to, you know what, I have to ask you here in Montreal, of course, Carey Price with the very long career that he's had, um, battled a lot of issues, of course. He entered the Players Assistance Program in the month of October. He didn't play a game until late in the season. He ended up playing five. He had surgery in the offseason the year before. He wasn't quite the same. Uh, He went to see his surgeon again, who probably gave him bad news. He went for a second opinion. Now he's looking at probably going with PRP uh, in terms of uh, plasma and his blood back in his knees and stuff like that. A lot of pain. Can you begin to talk about how taxing and grinding and grueling it is when you start hitting your mid thirties and you've played 15 years in the national hockey league and you play 55 plus games per season? You know what? It's hard on your body. I mean, that's the one thing I don't think people understand is if you've got a goalie that's playing 50, 55 games every year and you hurt a knee, one, it's hard on your body. It hurts every day. I mean, I went through it towards the end of my career where I tore up a knee. You hurt every single day. And it's hard to get your mind wrapped around that where you may have to change the way you play just because your body can't do the things that you want it to do. So and Kerry was the best in the game for a long time. And when he's healthy, I think he still is. So it's a, you hope that it gets better and you hope he finds a way that they can manage the pain so that he can play to his capabilities. And today does Grant Fuhr still have general body soreness or now being away from the game, you're, you know, you're fully recovered and you're feeling pretty good. <laughs> Anything that hurt I've replaced. I've replaced both knees. I replaced oh, really? the shoulders. So metal doesn't hurt as much as the regular body used to. 
But now there's still days where I get up in the morning and the body's still sore. So you just kind of stretch and work it out a little bit. It's kind of why I live in the desert. It's nice yeah. and hot, so it's easy on an old body. I hear you. Uh, speaking of Carey Price, it's tough, eh? When you have a 15-year career and you talked about how great he was for an extended period of time and one of, you know, probably the best in the game for several, several years, and you don't win a Stanley Cup. I mean, and he's not the first one to go through this, and he might end up winning one by the time his career is over. We hope for him, but that's really tough, eh? I, you, you probably wouldn't know what that feels like, obviously, because once again, you won four in a five-year span, but, you know, one of the cruelties of the game, I guess, has to be that, eh? It is. I mean, it's one of the hardest championships in sport to win. I think that's the part that people don't realize is when you play 82 regular season games, now you've got to win 16 games against the best teams that are left. And it's hard to do. It's hard to stay healthy through that run. It's hard for your team to stay healthy through that run. It's just, a, it's a two and a half month grind where you play every second day for 40, 45 days. So it's a hard thing to do. I can continue this conversation forever because you're the great Grand Fuhrer and this is an honor and a privilege, but you got some pretty nice weather there in California that you probably want to get to. So I'll end it with this. Out of all the great moments that you had in your career, the Stanley Cups, a dynasty team, the Canada Cup, everything. When you look back, if there was one moment that for you was a little bit more special than the others, what moment would that be? Uh, probably playing my first game in the National Hockey League because I got to do it in Edmonton in front of friends and family. Oh, really? So Isn't that something? Most guys don't get that opportunity. I got that chance where I probably knew a quarter of the people in the building. Oh, really, eh? How many so, tickets? Did you have to give out some tickets? Did you have to buy some tickets for that one? Yeah, we might have paid for a few tickets for that one. So, But no, anytime you can play in front of friends and family to start your career at home, I mean, there's nothing more special than that. And how did you do in that game? Uh, I lost. Oh, really? We, we played okay, but I lost. Uh, you know what? I think it's safe to say that you rebounded pretty nicely. Eh? Good luck with three ice. Have a lot of fun with it. I'm sure it's going to be very, very exciting. The prospect of three-on-three -three hockey. I love the entire format. I think it's going to lead to bigger and better things. I'm looking forward to it. I hope I can get out to a game. Thanks for taking the time to join me on the SICK Podcast. It truly was an honor. It's my pleasure. Hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you very much. There you have it. The great Grant Fuhrer. Wow. What a pleasure right here on the Sick Podcast. Tell your friends about it. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and Twitter at the Sick Podcast. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. Marinero from Villa Sal talking with the great Grant Fuhrer. Pretty cool job I have, huh? It's the best one. It's the Sick Podcast. Sassana Cup, he won it five times. I'm Marinaro. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinaro on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by 8.6, Intense by Nature, and Lakage. If the last time you went to Lakage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lakage. The menu will surprise you. <laughs>